Okay, good morning slash afternoon to everybody today. Uh, we're gonna get started here and this session will be recorded. Uh, welcome to Sterling and VMware's weekly power block session. I'm Megan Moore, Sterling's VMware Partner Business Manager. Uh, we know your time is valuable, so thank you so much for spending a portion of your day with us today. And before we dive into the demo, I wanted to give you just a brief overview of Sterling's capabilities. As you can see on this slide, Sterling is a principal VMware partner and a preferred services partner authorized to sell and service VMware solutions to customers across the nation. With 50 plus technical staff and 75 plus sales staff, all trained on VMware offerings, we are sure to provide you with an industry best value on all of your client to cloud IT needs. Sterling also holds many VMware competencies, including two master services competencies with more coming soon, as you can see listed there. Next slide, please. Sterling offers complete customized solutions from client to cloud. We serve on multiple, multiple federal, state, and local government contracts and support all industry verticals. Security is of the utmost importance here at Sterling. We have a robust secure supply chain, including OTIPs and CMMC certifications. For any questions that you have about Sterling, please use the email alias as you will find at the end of the demo. For questions during the demo, please put them at your Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen, and then we will address them at the end. Um, now I'm going to turn it over to VMware's Cloud Management Specialist, Adam Ballmer. Ballner, I'm so sorry, Adam, <laughs> to talk to us about getting started with VROPS. All right, thank you very much. So today I'm going to just kind of be covering a few um, key topics um, within the, the VROPS platform. So VROPS or VRealize Operations is a monitoring and management tool uh, from VMware that collects data from your virtual infrastructure as well as other systems, um, brings it all back in to the VROPS platform compiles it and allows you to do some really cool things with it. Um, so we're gonna kind of be covering the basics with that today. So the three things that I'm gonna be covering, um, critical troubleshooting, you know, what are the alerts and warnings in my environment that might need addressing, need to be addressed right away, um, capacity adjustments, um, being able to right size and reclaim resources, for performance improvements and cost savings. And then uh, the reporting and dashboarding capabilities, you know, starting out with simple dashboards showing basic inventory, going all the way up to you know, more complex dashboards, both out of the box and custom. Um, there's not going to be a demo through all of this. It's basically going to be all slides since this is just an introductory one, um, but there are, are other power blocks that are coming up on VROPS that we'll get into demos more. So with that, we're going to start out with the lay of the land here. So this is uh, what we call the four pillars. This is what you see when you first log in to vRealize operations. So up at the top, we've got optimizing performance, capacity, troubleshooting, and managing the configuration of your environment. And you can drill down into each of those and get more detail on them. So like I said, we're gonna be covering those first three, um, a few different subsections there today. Okay, so the first, first one is critical troubleshooting. So when you look at your environment, VROPS is going to bring back and bubble up alerts from your environment and these are shown under the alert section on troubleshooting. Um, and just to help you identify what's going on in your environment, and then you can kind of sort and stack rank them um, to see what needs to be addressed right away. So if we were to click into the alert section, we would see a list here grouped by time for the alerts. Now with this, um, we can take this and we can basically sort this um, instead of by time, we can sort it by criticality to see which ones we should be addressing first. So if we do that, we'll hit the drop down, go to criticality. And we, we can see here that instead of having almost 200 alerts to filter through, 
you know, we've kind of bubbled up those top 20 critical alerts, um, you know, to, to narrow down that scope there. So if we drill into the, the critical alerts here, we, we can kind of take a look down here and see some low hanging fruit, you know, right off the bat, this virtual machine CPU usage is at 100%. Um, so this is something that we should be able to take care of rather quickly within the VROPS tool. So we can drill into this here <clears throat> and we get a little bit more information. So we're in the triggered alerts page and this is going to give us the ability to remediate the issue directly from, from VROPS by adding more CPU capacity for this machine. Or if we wanted to dig even deeper, we could uh, click on the machine name and we could take a look at the, the historical data for all of the metrics on this machine just to see if there's something else going on here. So with this, you can see that we have the ability to set the CPU count here, or as I was saying before, you can click in here. So if we were to click in on this machine name here, it's going to take us to the summary page. So the summary page, um, it provides a, a lot of good information. Over on the left-hand side, we can see the hierarchy that's going to show us where this machine fits into the environment, what host it's on, what cluster it's in, the data stores it's connected to, and so on. Um, just a real a quick summary. Um, kind of in the middle there, we see the capacity section, time remaining and, and capacity remaining. And this is showing us that the CPU is the most constrained resource <clears throat> of this uh, particular VM here. Okay. So within this same page, after we've gotten kind of a lay of the land with the summary, we can click up on the actions button on the top there. And this is where we would have the ability to kind of take a look um, at the, the CPU count. And if we needed to add, a, add an additional CPU, we could do that from here and basically just have VROPs automated out into the environment. Um, or like I said, we could drill down deeper and look at the historical uh, pieces of information you know, looking at the CPU utilization over time and seeing if this is just a one-off spike that's happening or if this is something that is recurring on a regular basis and this machine really does need more resources. So this is just kind of a, a quick high level on um, critical troubleshooting. Um, like I said, you can use VROPS for kind of drilling into all, all of those alerts and getting more detail on them. So the next phase or the next section it, that we're going to step through is um, capacity adjustments, um, you know, to save on cost and to improve performance. <clears throat> so again, going back to our, our main landing page under the optimized performance and optimized capacity, we've got the right sizing and reclaim sections there. So with these two sections, <clears throat> we're gonna take these one at a time. First, we'll start with the right sizing tool. So when we go into right sizing across the top, we've got all of our different data centers um, and clusters that, that we're looking at here. And we can see the ones in red have zero days remaining. So they're very capacity constrained. So if we were to click on the production cluster, it's going to populate down below the oversized and undersized VMs within this particular cluster. So on the left, we've got the oversized VMs. Um, you know, the benefit here downsizing them is there, there's going to be an overall cost savings because they're not really using all of those resources that they've been granted. Um, and on the right side, the undersized VMs, you know, if we kind of upsize those VMs, we're going to see performance improvements potentially on those particular machines here. So 
So when we click on the uh, resize VMs, VROPS is going to go and look at the historical data for, for the machines that we're looking at and look at the usage based upon uh, the resources granted. And with that information, it's going to be able to tell us um, or give us recommendations based upon what it thinks the machine needs based upon its actual usage. So you can see here that, you know, we've got six VMs listed and it's showing um, CPU, you know, increase recommendations on three of them and then memory increase recommendations on three of them. So it kind of gives you a quick summary at the bottom, but these are all machines that would benefit from adding additional resources to. And with this, you can either um, take the recommendations that VROPS is giving and just apply them to your machines and VROPS will go out and grant the resources to the machine for you and make the changes. Or you can export this as a report. Some, some people don't necessarily like to just have VROPS do things um, you know, without telling the administrator of the machine, for example. Um, so there's a few different ways that you can handle this here. And then on the flip side uh, with the oversized VMs, the same thing holds true. So we can take the VROPS recommendations and uh, select the VMs that we want to address. And it's not an all or nothing thing. You can pick and choose which ones you want to address and take um, the corrective action there. So a few different ways that you can handle that there within the tool. So that was uh, right sizing. And now let's shift gears and go over to reclaiming unused resources. So with the unused resources, um, again, we're going to focus on the production cluster. And we'll see here at the bottom, um, kind of a, a total savings um, that's broken down by each resource here. So if you follow those arrows, we can identify the, the VMs that are sitting in a powered off state um, or idle state uh, snapshots based on age and disks that have been orphaned um, out there. And you'll see the cost calculation there. That's based on a, a backend price card where you can actually fill in your own uh, cost data um, and VROPS will calculate the, you know, all of its projections out for you there. Um, or you can just kind of use the out of the box um, default pricing. So it's really up to you how, how deep you want to get into the, the pricing for that. So with all of this, um, you know, same, same thing as with the right sizing, you have the ability to come in here and, you know, in this case, we're looking at idle VMs. It's showing you how many resources can be reclaimed um, in terms of memory, CPU, and disk space. And it's also showing you how long these particular VMs have been idle. The same thing is going to apply <clears throat> for the snapshots. If you wanted to see, um, you know, snapshots over 10 days or 30 days, um, you, you could kind of sort and filter and make your own determinations there. Um, but you can see up at the top of the buttons, giving you the ability to power off the VMs, delete the VMs. Um, if you wanted to exclude the VMs because they're a known quantity and you just didn't want them showing up in the report, you could do something like that. Um, or again, you could export this and basically just have this as a you know, spreadsheet CSV file where you could uh, take action on your own, however you wanted to. Draw this out here. All right, and the final section is dashboarding and reporting. So with dashboarding and reporting, um, there's uh, just a ton of out of the box dashboards that come with the tool that cover, as you can see here, everything from your virtual machine and, and, and host, um, you know, up to vSAN and application level. You can also customize the dashboards for your environment. So if you have a, a particular hot topic, so to speak, um, that you're always dealing with, you can customize a dashboard or create a brand new one 
that looks solely at that. And you know, maybe it builds off of some of the alerts that you've been receiving. Um, the, these things don't live on islands unto themselves. So you could have alerts bubbled up in the dashboard and then have that dashboard driving additional information, uh, really making it more of an interactive uh, dashboard versus something static. Um, you know, the choice is really yours there. So with this, you can kind of see down the left-hand side, a lot of the um, dashboards that come with the tool. And with this tool, you can also integrate in management packs, which allow you to connect, um, you know, other resources in your environment. And those management packs would also come with their own dashboards. So you're not stuck necessarily creating dashboards from scratch for every, um, every nuanced piece of infrastructure that you're looking at. So the next thing I'd like to do is kind of just take a look at some of the out of the box dashboards and just kind of give you a feel for you know, what those are like. There's a, a lot of uh, visualizations that you, you can use within the tool to kind of help you bubble up the information that you need. So this particular one that we're looking at here is an inventory dashboard. Um, and like I said before, these dashboards can either be interactive where you can have the ability to drill down into the data and do some more exploring, or they can be a static dashboard. You know, if you're exporting this out as a PDF or an Excel output, you would probably want something that's a little bit more static. Um, so depending on what you what you're going to be using the dashboard for, you can build that to suit your needs. Uh, in this one here on the, the main section, we've got a relationship diagram similar to the one we saw before. It basically just shows the connections between the VMs, the data centers. Um, you know, you can have this as populated as you like. So if you want to go to the data store level cluster level, um, you can kind of see where all of those tie in. And this is very interactive. So you can click on these resources and kind of drill into them and see, you know, maybe you click on a VM and it would show you the folder that that particular VM is in or a resource pool associated with it, that sort of thing. Also, when you click on any of these objects in the relationship chart, it's going to build out um, the, the interactivity that I keep talking about on the right hand side, it's going to show you properties and metrics for this particular resource. Now VROPS um, out of the box collects thousands of metrics um, on all of your resources and that that gathering of data is done every five minutes um, on a five minute polling cycle. So the, the data points get rather large rather quickly. And, you know, customers that I've worked with in the past, the, the thing that they struggle with sometimes is data overload because there's so much data in here. And one of the things I always recommend, and you kind of see it here, is just starting with the basics. You don't necessarily have to go you know, really deep into the metrics to get a lot of useful information. You can look at demand and the higher level metrics um, just and get kind of a, a good high level overview as you see on the right hand side here. And then as you get more comfortable with the tool, you can start utilizing some of those you know, more detailed metrics as you, as you need. Um, then along the bottom here, we've got uh, just some quick summary pages on the clusters host and virtual machines, just kind of showing how they're configured. Okay, this is uh, another sample dashboard showing virtual machine availability. So we see um, a few different things. On the top top left, we see the the different data centers, how many clusters, hosts, and VMs are associated with each data center, um, and then at the lower left, we see the average uptime of each VM. In this case, it looks like this particular data center isn't doing so hot. Um, and then we can kind of see some of the, the trend over time 
of um, you know the particular VM that um, you know we've clicked on here. So the lower section, those two uh, solid green bars with the triangle, we can see that the VM um, was powered on and did have a good uptime trend. And then you know, around September 21st, it looks like it just kind of fell off the face of the earth and was powered down. So that's just kind of a quick summary there. And then the upper right hand corner is showing you the kind of overall um, environment for this particular data center, how many VMs um, and their uptime over the last month for this uh, DC data center here. So with this, like I said, this is an out of the box dashboard, but you can manipulate these, all of our dashboards, are they're not locked down. So you can go in and manipulate them um, to see the information that is more valuable and relevant to you. Okay, and another dashboard. This is a good example. The, this is a vSAN capacity dashboard. And this is a great example of a dashboard that comes as part of a management pack within the tool. Um, you can see a lot of vSAN specific um, capacity information. Um, you see that we're starting to get into more visualizations here with the heat map that you see that's that colored bar um, in the center there. The heat maps allow you to view multiple metrics uh, in one view. So this is um, as you get into it more, this is going to give you a lot more information in you know, a very small pane of glass, so to speak. And then finally, um, we've got um, one more sample dashboard. And this is just kind of showing um, VM configuration, basically. Um, and this goes to show how you can draw out detailed data on your VM. So here we're looking at operating system, tool status, tools version, and all of these different pie charts, you can drill into them. So if you want to get a quick working list for VMs that needed their tools version upgraded, um, you know, you could drill in there and export the data there um, as something to work with. So again, just another way of visualizing uh, the data and you know being able to manipulate and work with it as as you need to. Okay, so I, I've kind of beat this horse, but all of the dashboards here are completely customizable. They're they're really quick to spin up. Um, it's a drag and drop interface. You don't need you know. Java or any programming language experience, it's very quick and easy to spin up. Um, the, the dashboards can be manipulated to no end. So I, I have found customers that will keep tweaking dashboards, you know, until they get something just right. And that can take a while, but to get the basic dashboard is a pretty quick process. And then sharing the dashboards out, um, you know, I'd like to point out here that you don't necessarily need to grant everybody access to be realized operations in order to share a dashboard. You can generate a link and it can be a time expiring link or you can have it set as an indefinite link and basically just give them a read only version of the dashboard that they have the ability to pull up and reference whenever they want. You can also send a, an email, export it. You know, there's a number of different ways you can handle it. Um, but anyway, that, that's kind of the dashboard and reporting piece. So a little bit ahead of schedule, but what we covered today, you know, talking about critical troubleshooting, being able to bubble up those alerts uh, from your vCenter, looking at the capacity planning and adjusting the the needs of the VM, and then looking at the dashboarding and reporting in there. Any questions you guys have, feel free to drop them in the Q&A. Megan, do we have anything? Yes, we do have a few questions here. Uh, the first one is, can VRAPs monitor performance in my Horizon VDI environment or other infrastructure that I use? Okay. 
Um, yeah, there is a, a plugin for the Horizon environment, actually. Um, so you can kind of pull Horizon specific data in into your environment, into your VROPS environment. And, um, you know, there's custom dashboards that come with that as well to give you the ability to see Horizon specific information. I'm not a Horizon uh, guru, but, you know, things like log on times and queue lengths and, you know, Horizon specific information is bubbled up. And um, the, the same thing um, you were talking about other, other infrastructure, there's a, a few different ways we handle that. There's the VMware marketplace that has a number of management packs that are available for free to download that are put out by other vendors, you know, HP, Brocade, so on and so forth. Um, that allow you to connect VROPs to your other infrastructure. And what that allows you to do is kind of pull, pull those metrics in and get a single pane of glass view um, for your environment. So you can kind of see all of your, um, you know, key, key infrastructure pieces um, at the same time. So yes, both of those are definitely covered. Great, thank you. And then uh, the next question is, when you were talking about uh, capacity adjustments, is there a limit to the recommendations that VROPs will give when decreasing capacity? Um, so VROPs, when we talk about the capacity uh, recommendations, VROPs is um, going to err on the side of caution, I'll say. so. Let's say that you've got an eight vCPU virtual machine and it's really only sitting there using one vCPU or two perhaps. Um, VROPS is going to take that recommendation and then it's going to kind of take 50% off of that. Um, and the, the idea behind that is to kind of stair step down within the recommendation. So the first recommendation might be going from eight vCPUs to four vCPUs. And then a week or a month later, it would update that recommendation to drop it down even further to two vCPUs. So yes, we're, we're not really going to try and take, um, get it exactly narrowed down if that makes sense, in one one fell swoop, we're going to kind of take a, a more reserved approach in in how we handle things there. So yeah, good question. And that is all the questions we have today. Okay, very good. So, yes, thank you so much. And do you have a, another slide with email aliases on it, Adam? I do. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. Please do not hesitate to reach out if you have any questions, comments. Um, all of our uh, information is there. Um, if you'd like to see uh, this, get this recording, uh, please reach out and we'll get that to you. It will also be up on our uh, website, on the Sterling website under Proven Performance. Um, and have a very great day. Thank you. Thanks, guys.